Wow, intros are hard. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Asian Globe Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Jojo. And I'm April. Today, we're talking about Korea and our experiences there because we were there for a bit of time earlier a while. this year. You were there yeah. much longer than I was, but I was there for still a really good chunk of time. Yeah, like and we were able month. to go like all over too, which was really nice. Like we didn't just yeah. stay in Seoul. So mm-hmm. so I think you were there for a total of like three, four weeks? Um, three weeks? I think technically three weeks. It definitely mm-hmm. felt longer, but... Yeah, I did feel like we were there together really for a long, long. time. <laughs> yeah, because I was there with my family for two weeks and they were mm-hmm. like, wow, we thought two weeks would go by way too fast, but they were almost like, we could go back to America soon. Yeah, that's surprising because yeah. it's been so long since they went back to... I would think that they're like... Let me stay. Like, I don't want to leave. But yeah, they're no. like, no, let's GTFO. Yeah, no, they really missed America, which was kind of surprising. Mm-hmm. Also, can I just address if you're watching this visually, our aesthetics today <laughs> are absolutely. I know. Opposite. It's like the tool, like the chiffon tool, like, skirt situation. Like soft girl. I know. And then you have your new septum piercing. And I have my septum <laughs> piercing in. I'm wearing all black. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to address that. I just think it's I feel funny. like it's kind of fitting. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Um, But anyways, yeah, we were in Korea for quite a bit of time. Yeah. And I don't know, for context, like the last time I went to Korea personally was when I was 12 years old. So I've only been Mm. twice in my entire life. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So this was also my second time in Korea. But my last time Mm -hmm. in Korea was with my family in 2019, like right before 2020 and COVID and everything. Um, But I think when you're traveling with your family, it's just such a different experience from when you're traveling with friends or on your own. So I was in Korea for, well, I guess I was in Asia for total like four or five months. I think Korea specifically, maybe like three months. Yeah. You were there for such a long time. It's not like that long, but I think it was enough time for me to really get a lay of the land. I think by the Mm -hmm. end of it, we were like, Oh, like people on the train, like subway stations would be like asking me for directions. And then I would be like, yeah, I know where that is. Like you need to take this, this and this. Wow. I didn't even get to that point. Yeah. And then yeah. they'll be like, okay, thanks. Or like people come up to me and like, I could tell that they're like, maybe think trying to speak Korean. Like, I don't know. A lot of tourists would look at me and be like, Do you is she Korean? Korean? Is she not Korean? And I could tell that they were like, kind of like want to come up to me and like test. Mm. And then I'll just be like, oh yeah, like. I speak English, so yeah. it's there. And they're like, oh, my God, thank you. And then I'm like, okay. Oh, I'm like, okay. wow, like, not me knowing the directions now, but nice. I think that felt really good because I'm like, okay, like, I know where things are. Yeah. I've kind of been around the block. But yeah, so overall, now that we've kind of spent some time in Korea, both of us separately and together, what are some things that, like, really surprised you or, like, you wish you knew before going? I feel like I just never really honestly thought about the fact that I'm Korean American, Mm. but there are other types of people out there in the world. Like, obviously, I know that, right? But I, I it's different facing it it. and like absolutely different happen. Like, it was weird just meeting people that lived in Korea their entire life, so they're just Mm. Korean, Mm -hmm. and then meeting people that are like Korean Spanish or like Korean Australian. Obviously, I freaking know they exist. Like, (laughs) but it's just so weird when you finally meet them and you're like, wow, our our lives are so entirely different. And I feel right. like... Do you ever think like, damn, if my parents didn't like leave Korea, I would be here and doing probably something similar to what these like people that you met are doing. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I, I do think I'm glad that I was actually raised in America, mm-hmm. but it is just interesting because it's like that one decision that our parents made. Oh, for sure. Changed like, so much. My mom almost went to New Zealand. And like, if oh my she gosh. went to New Zealand, she wouldn't have met my dad. Like, who knows what she would have done in New Zealand, yeah. you know? So yeah, you might have existed as like someone completely different. Yeah. Or not at or all. Or not at all. <laughs> yeah. But now here we are. That's trippy, thinking about like, right. decisions and life choices and stuff. Yeah. Mm. So I would say for me, something that I wish I knew would just be like how different their like what's the word just the way that they act in restaurants or in like restaurant settings is Mm. like so different the etiquette is really strange yeah Yeah. like it's it's very unique i think to korea because even when i travel Mm. to other places in in asia it it does feel a little bit different like what are some examples like eating alone is like kind of not looked down upon but 
it's just I don't like think not it's a thing. Really welcomed. Yeah. So the official term is called honbap, mm-hmm. which is eating alone, like the direct translation. <laughs> yeah. And like for example, Jackie. Right. When I was gone and April yeah, and I was Justin in were gone. Yeah. She really wanted Korean barbecue, but she was craving samgyeopsal, like specifically yeah. pork belly. But it's really hard to find that in like just a single person serving. Right. So restaurants would honestly turn her away. Yeah. They're like, unless you order two servings, like yeah. you can't eat here. Cause yeah. we don't want to give you the table for two people when you're by yourself and you're only yeah. ordering one. When someone else can come in and take the and, table. And like order a bunch more food, I guess. Which is but, kind of weird. I feel like yeah. in America, like that wouldn't really happen. Yeah. Right? But maybe it's also because like the panchan and stuff might be wasted. Oh, like they're just giving more for free. So it's like, yeah, not like I could totally them. see them being stingy on their panchan. Like yeah. imagine like mm. setting out all these dishes and you're not even sure if this person's actually going to eat them. Right. It's like, can you just give me a little less? Like I don't need all the banchan. Right. Like maybe or just like just ask and, like, me which else. ones I want. Yeah. I but I don't know. I feel like these like Korean grannies like don't give a fuck. They're just kind of like, no. Or, yeah. They'll straight up bleh. just say no. Yeah. But like it's yeah. interesting because we went to Japan first before Korea and Japan is like, they love eating alone. Like there's so many restaurants mm. where there's like stalls. And I, I don't think it's just because of COVID. I think it's genuinely because like everyone's just getting lunch or dinner by themselves. And like it's very normal to be eating by yourself all the time. And also mm. in Korea, there's like couple sets everywhere, which like further ingrains idea of like going yeah. out as a duo at least. But I there love are the a lot sets. of couples in general too. True. And it's so cute when they're matching in the street. I don't know. They're always matching. It's yeah. very much so like, this is my boyfriend. This is right, my girlfriend. Right. Every time Justin and I saw um, like a couple wearing like matching clothes, I'm like, when are we going to do that? We never did it, but <laughs> it's cute. Well, technically we got some like ugly tourist shirts that were matching, <laughs> but that was including all of us. Yes. So. Very cute. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> we're a <could> thruple. <laughs> is that what it's called? Yes. <laughs> Okay, what else about restaurant etiquette or like Korean culture, I guess, shocked you? Oh, I guess going back to the food related thing, something else that I was thinking about when I came back to America, because I just got so used to it, was you pay by going up to the um, like the front desk right when you walk in. There's like this little yeah. area where they're taking cards and stuff. So like in America, when we came back, I was after eating, I'm like, okay, it's time to go pay. I'm like, wait, no, we had to call the check and then yeah. we had to pay. But I feel like the way it they do it in Korea makes a lot more sense because it's faster. It's so much more efficient. It's very efficient. You don't have to like wave over someone. Yeah, like all those TikTok go. trends where they're like, waiter, can we get the bill? You know what I'm talking about? I have not seen that. No. Oh my gosh. It's like who can – it's a joke. Mm-hmm. Like you don't actually want the waiter to see you. But right. you go around the table and you compare who can do the most cringe like, mm. can I get the bill please? <laughs> And like that trend would not work in Korea. Oh, absolutely not. They'll just yeah. be like, you're crazy. Like go yeah, to the like, front. Fucking walk to the front yeah. and give me your money. I, I think overall it is very efficient because when we first got there, Justin and I would kind of sit down, look at the menu, think about what we want. But we could tell that the grannies were kind of like, hurry the fuck up. So after mm-hmm. a little bit of time, like Justin would start ordering like before we sit down. So we'll be like walking oh. to our table and he'll be like, oh, okay, we'll get two of da da da. And I'll just be like, yeah, because another thing mm. is a lot of restaurants focus on specific dishes. So you're right. not going to a restaurant to like try 10 different things. You're like, right. that's the restaurant that I really want to go to for gabi tang or that's the restaurant I really want to go for whatever. So when you go, you kind of already know what you want to eat. That's, that's really true. So it's like Justin's ordering before we sit down so that like they don't get mad at us. And then the mm. banchan comes out right away. The food comes out so fast because, like I said, they're only really making, like, one or two things in the back. Yeah. So it's already made and it's really delicious. So, yeah. Very efficient. Very, like, quick paced as well, which Mm -hmm. I think we're used to because of New York. Yeah. But I could see how if you're from, like, just anywhere else, I guess, where you're not used to that, it's kind of like, oof. I know. Really fast. (laughs) It's like, please, let me take a look at the menu, especially when the menu is not in English, which is most of the time. Yeah. Like, as someone who's like, let me translate, let me look. And they're just kind of like, okay, like, are you done? Like, what do you want to eat? And you're just kind of like, we need a second. (laughs) Also, something funny, like, I'm really used to this because actually a lot of Korean restaurants in America do this as well. Mm -hmm. But I was eating dinner with one of my friends who's from Texas, and she was like, oh my gosh, they forgot to give us silverware. And I was like, no, girl, you open the side drawer yeah and she was like there's a drawer here and i was like <laughs> yeah like most of the wooden tables here have mm-hmm. little slidey out drawers and it's like all the chopsticks you could ever need right spoons no forks yeah yeah but and, like literally ooh, everything you know what i love i love the little wet napkins 
Yeah, they do give you wet I, napkins. I wish America did that. Some do, so but nice. I feel like it's only like the upscale restaurants. It's rare, but in yeah. Korea, it's like, even if you go to the most random, like, 9,001 soup place, like, they're going to have wet napkins for you. And it's just, like, cleaner, I feel like. But I I'm mean, always like, do you wipe your hands before or after? I guess it depends. I usually do both. True. It de- just also there. depends on what you're eating. True. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. I don't know. It just feels nice. Like you should be washing your hands anyways, but like yeah. having that extra layer of just like, let me just like wipe between it down. the bathroom to the table. Yeah. Because like, for example, when I was eating raw marinated crab, mm. half the table wiped it before. Yeah. And I did before and after, but I was like, after my hands are going to be so dirty. Right. So it's just like. Did you wear gloves? Yes. Yeah. But it yeah. likes the oils seep through. Also, like the smell just lingers. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. But I feel like the silverware side table thing is just another example of how efficient they are. Because, like, we're not going to give yeah. you utensils. Like, you can grab mm-hmm. it yourself. Also, like, water cups are usually already at the table, too. Yeah. They're, like, stacked up. Mm-hmm. Or there's, like, a little water station where you need to go get it yourself. Yeah, like, do it yourself. <laughs> water stations yeah. as well. So, yeah, it's, like, very self-efficient. Like, for sure. Serve yourself. A lot of panchan is also self-serve. Oh, I love the self-serve panchan. Because yeah. for me, at least, I usually like, like, I usually really like one or two things and I want more of those one or two things as opposed yeah. to like eating a lot of everything. Yeah. So it's nice when you can Wait, What's your favorite yourself. panchan? Ooh. And did that answer change before and after Korea? I think yes. I actually don't know what it's called, but it's like squid and it's red, Ooh. but they put um, like pine nuts and stuff in it. Justin and I went all the time specifically just to eat that. Like that sounds it's self serve. So we would just get like heaps and heaps of it and like. We would always say we would just go there and just eat rice and that if, if we could. It's like chopped. Re- um, I need to figure out what the name is and like put a picture here or something. But yeah. Insert picture yeah. <laughs> here. That sounds so good. It's really yummy. Mm. And I think the only, not the only, but the other thing I like would be maybe brain sprouts. And I actually don't love bean sprouts. But mm. for some reason, Korean like banchan bean sprouts with the sesame oil. The sesame oil so good. do be hitting. So I, good. I love kong namur, but mm-hmm. um, it's not my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. What is your favorite? So... It kind of depends on Mm -hmm. what my main entree is, but usually if it's like a soup or something, my top favorite panchans are odeng, which is fish cake. Oh, yes. Love that shit. That might be my number one favorite. Really? But as the banchan though? Yes, as banchan. Because I like odeng. Not as like the soup. I like odeng as in soup, not Mm. the banchan. I like it in soup, but I prefer it as the panchan Mm -hmm. where it's like lightly sauteed. Mm -hmm. And my mom makes it with like onions Mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Bomb. Love. Um, and I also like the black beans, which is called kong. Oh, okay. Yeah, that one's not as common. I like the black beans too. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say they're my favorite, um, but I like how they're a little sweet and the texture is like... They're like very chewy. It's like kind of chewy, yeah. yeah. And I really like chewy food, so I think yeah. that's why I eat it. I, yeah, the I, texture's nice. I feel like I snack on it when I'm like really hungry and I'm mm-hmm. waiting for the food to come out, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to be like, ooh, give me more. Yeah. Like, I want to eat more. Yeah. So. And then I actually prefer gakdugi over... Normal kimchi, mm-hmm. like cabbage kimchi. Um, I don't know. I love like just like the radish. Yeah. It's so good. I really like kimchi, but I think it can also not taste good at the same time. Like it depends on where yes. you are. Because some places make yes. kimchi really well. And I feel like I personally have like a very specific type of kimchi that I like. Do you like it like old and stinky or do you like it like fresh and crunchy? I like it a little bit fresher and a little bit crunchier. Mm. But I like it when – I sometimes can tell if I will like it or not based on the based on the color. <laughs> do you want to re-say that? <laughs> she just choked <laughs> I need to drink water but yeah sometimes I can tell if I will like it or not based on the color and it needs to True. be like a little more red sometimes when it's too more orange yeah I don't like it as much and I'm mm. not sure does it get more orange if it's like I feel fermenting like the, for longer I feel like the red gets like deeper the longer it ferments okay yeah because I like yeah. it a little like dark red but crunchier mm. and a little bit fresher I go yeah. for like the leafy, stringy bits. Right. And I we like the it, opposite. <laughs> yeah. I like it very like old. Soft. Yeah. Soft. Because for me, that's like kimchi jjigae, not like right. banchan when I'm like about to eat something else. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. I like like the kimchi jjigae type of kimchi. Mm, mm-hmm. I see. I see. Yeah. Kimchi jjigae mm-hmm. is so good, but that's like specifically for the soup. Yeah. I want the crunch when no, I'm I just eating. <laughs> Sometimes you want like a, a fresh leafy. For sure. Refreshing palate cleanser. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. I love how all of our Korea thoughts are like around food yeah i'm like okay what else should we talk about i know but i just feel like food, food is, is such a big yeah part of traveling it's though. such a huge part of korea specifically too yeah like, so much of the culture, the culture in korea is around food and the food is so good drinking yes i don't really drink big that drinking. much so I, I feel like i didn't really like go out that much i still went out yeah you went out a lot, a lot. 
I think she went out more in the three weeks than I did in the three months. Oh, I know I did. Yeah. I think you probably only went out like less than five times. Oh, for sure. Maybe like three times. Yeah. If that. (laughs) Which is okay. Like, you know, to each their own. I know. And I wasn't planning on doing it. Right. That's true. Um, It just kind of happened. Every time I went out, it was like a lot of different like circumstances and situations. Mm -hmm. Like I actually went out with my cousins one or two times, maybe two or three times actually. Mm -hmm. But also like I had never met my cousins before in my entire life. yeah. So they'll be like, where are we going after this? And you're like, I don't know. No, literally because one of the days we – so I went to Pusan with them because that's where my dad's side is from. And literally my cousins and I – it wasn't even me or my brother's suggestion, but my older cousin, he was like – okay, we got to ditch the adults. And I was like, what do you mean ditch the adults? And he was like, I mean, they're doing their thing. We've yeah. got lost time to catch up on. Let's go right. Let's go out. Mm-hmm. And so – Let's go karaoke. Let's do, do all the things. They love karaoke. Yeah. Have you heard of um, – I think it's called like dollar karaoke. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Wait, is that what it's called? It's coin, coin, coin karaoke. Coin karaoke. Yeah. They love that shit. I, I read a webtoon <laughs> randomly a while ago, and they referred to webtoons as coca – like C O K A. I don't know if this is a thing that people actually say in Korea, but mm. like I think Coca when I see it because of that, that webtoon, and they always called it that. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. I'm I'm sure it is called that. Um, I have no idea. But yeah, like my cousins were like, so two of them want to be singers actually, mm. and so they say because they don't want to drive their siblings crazy, they will oh. go to the coin karaoke place and just practice there. I see. Yeah. Cool. I thought that was really smart. Like yeah. you can't do that in America. Yeah, you can't really. Yeah. I mean, I guess in America, you're not really living with your family as much. Right. It's very common to be living with your family in Korea. Like, you have to. That's another It's like, why are you thing. not living with your family? Like, I would meet, like, people in their mid to late 30s still mm-hmm. living with their parents. Yeah, and that's, like, normal. No shame to that. Mm-hmm. It's just, like, very normal. It's just a cultural difference. Very so, cultural. I guess for us, it's like, you can belt out your song if you want to in your apartment, but yeah. you can't do that in, in Korea. Yeah. I will say, though, like, one of the people I met who – is probably in their like mid thirties who mm-hmm. still lives with their parents. I was like, oh, so that must mean you're close to them. And oh. he was like, not necessarily. Right. They're like, so, this is more out of obligation than like kind of a want. Yeah. Also, maybe it's a need because housing in Korea is so expensive. Yeah. Okay. I don't know the if this down is payment. True. Is crazy. Okay. The down payment. Yes. Like a, it's a lot of money. Like way more than even like New York. Yeah. Like, yeah. And that's to rent. Yes. Like that's you need to, to put rent. a crazy down payment and still pay monthly. Like a lot of companies apparently will sponsor the down payment to help you pay it off because they know you can't afford it. Yeah. So I think that's a big reason. I mean, I'm not an expert on the housing situation in Korea, but I feel like that is probably a big reason as Mm -hmm. to why people are not moving out. Um, Because I had a friend tell me about how her cousin lives at home and she's probably, I don't remember, late 20s, early 30s maybe. And dating is like a a weird thing because you can't like bring people home, right? So are you going to talk about the um, the love hotels? Yeah. So Ooh. they would go to love hotels, but like maybe there's an instance where she like brings her boyfriend back home. Um, oh, she lives with her sister. So this girl lives with her okay. older sister. And I guess her older sister's maybe like a little bit more, you know, like conservative, more traditional. And she was just like, you can never bring your boyfriend back here. Like ever. Never? Ever. So one time Ooh. I think the sister like came home from work or something and she saw that um, – the boyfriend's shoes are outside because, of course, Asian people love to take their shoes off before going in. Always. And apparently she got, like, super pissed and was like, you need to – you like, he needs to leave, like, right now. And, like, it was just, like, super – like, you have to, like, scramble. It feels like you're a kid getting caught for something. Like, and this woman's, like, in her late 20s, early 30s probably. Yeah. And it's like, you need to go. Like, you're grabbing all your shit. Like, put your shoes on. And they had to, like, leave the house. And the – like, it's just weird. And I'm assuming after that they probably didn't do that again. But – I can't imagine being that old and having to deal with that. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Right. But you have to like listen because it's like, well, I'm staying in your it's house. It's like a respect thing. It's like a respect thing. Like if you don't want it, then I can't. Mm. And I think it also has to do with the like hierarchy system in Korea, which is yeah. also very intense. Because um, every like when they call you, like when you're in a store, they're not calling you like, oh, hey, like, come on in. It's like, hey, yeah. customer, come in. They call in. you like boss sometimes. Yeah, it's like, hey, boss, come in. And it's very yeah. like, there's a ranking and like, mm-hmm. it's based on your age. And I remember even Justin and I went on like a 
tour of um i think it was bokton village or something yeah. i don't remember but we went on a tour and the tour guide was probably in his late 20s and justin started talking to him about like what life in korea was like whether or not he likes it and i could tell that this man like had really mixed feelings Ooh, okay. he's like there's a lot to love about korea and it's really great but there's just a lot of things that are very traditional here and the younger generation is like not really for it anymore mm-hmm. and it's like obviously budding heads and creating tension with like the different generations mm-hmm. i mean this is speaking very broadly of course um but he was just like yeah like hockey system is just like a lot and you feel like you know if you work at a company and let's say you're a manager and one of your direct reports is technically older than you it's like a weird line that you have to navigate because it's like well one you're my direct report and i'm like more senior than you quote unquote but at the same time you're more senior than me in life and korea is really weird about like respect like it's like like doing things age like it's like the it's not even your age it's the year you were born yeah Mm -hmm. yeah because i noticed when i was meeting people they'd be like oh what year were you born not how old are you but it's like are you asking me that so you can know if you can like a little bro me or not you know i think i think that's also a part of it (laughs) right yeah yeah it's interesting yeah very very interesting Mm -hmm. oh so funny so like uh my brother and i one of our friends fred he lived in Korea for like four and a half years. So that's also a big reason why I was going out like yeah. so much. Mm-hmm. And we went to one of his basketball games and that was interesting because it's like mostly Korean American guys just flocking together every Sunday mm-hmm. and they created this like little casual league where they can play together right. that's every cute. single week. Good for them. Yeah. And they like get dinner together. They go out together. It's just like a little community that formed over the mm-hmm. last few years. But they invited us out to eat with them. And my brother's 21. So he's absolutely the youngest. Like the age ranges were like I was probably like the second youngest after him. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Everyone was like 29 or older, I would say. Mm -hmm. And we ordered Mm kalbichim. And I didn't really realize this, but when the food came out, everyone was staring at my brother to prep the food for everyone. to like cut it and stuff. They were expecting him to cut it. And so they were joking. And one of them was like, yeah, I can tell you're really American because you didn't like immediately lunge, like yeah go and for like it. Oh go for it like the scissors and yeah. the and everything and the tongs and so my brother starts doing it but i mean just oh, no, not just edward probably hasn't really seen that before is that a common thing in it's, texas it's not common i like, haven't seen anything, that my mom will do it for us yeah like i haven't seen that in america and i guess we should briefly explain what that is we ordered just for context it was like a big portion mm-hmm. it's pretty much just like i don't know how to describe it like braised beef yeah yeah and there's it's like bone in so usually someone will help the youngest out. usually it's the youngest <laughs> i feel like in my experience in america it's usually the oldest person so mm-hmm. it's always like one of my parents okay. doing it but the thought is that one person will help like prep all the meat so that everyone else can Could eat it more it easily. easily yeah like it's like a respect thing of course mm-hmm. and so everyone's just staring at edward like, like hello? very intently being like <laughs> why is he not prepping the food wait so who ended up doing it um so actually i think fred ended up stepping up for him because mm-hmm. he was like this is gonna take forever because like my brother's not used to like using the scissors either and like yeah. some of the meat was right. kind of tough so yeah. so fred did it for us mm-hmm. but it was funny and like it was something that they like specifically called out and mm-hmm. were joking around about right. so it was just a funny thing to notice because yeah, they're probably used to like anytime they hang out with anyone that's like a little bit a older little, yeah they're gonna be diving for the scissors yes. and like making sure that that's prepped yeah, and that's the same thing with like water for the table. Mm. Usually the youngest will, if it's a self-serve station, they will go out of their way to go get cups for every single person. Right. Or if it's already set at the table, they'll be the ones pouring a cup for every single person. Mm-hmm. And I feel yeah. like these are maybe more like quote unquote minor examples of mm-hmm. the hierarchy system and like how people treat people differently because of it. I'm sure there's a lot of things that are really fucking annoying where it's like- That we don't even know. That we don't know about because yeah. we didn't have to deal with it, obviously. But Okay, I will say- I don't want to generalize anything, obviously, because, you know, we're not experts. Mm -hmm. And I just learned this from talking to, like, three people one night about it. But apparently – so you know how you're talking about how, like, like in the workplace, when someone's older, you really have to respect them no Mm -hmm. matter, like, what position you have? Yeah. So one of the people I met, he said that a few nights – or this is very common. Like, sometimes they go out and someone who's more senior than them will bring – like a lady friend. Wait, what? <laughs> That's and in most of these situations they're they have girlfriends okay. or they have wives already. But there's just like a oh. random girl and they they don't talk about it. They just say, 
hi, this is my friend, blah, blah. Oh, my God. Yeah. And it's very common for them to just be openly cheating. Yeah. But I've heard cheating is actually very common yes, in Korea. I've heard that a lot. Right. So people, like, you can't say anything because that's, like, your right. senior person. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently that's just a thing. And you just oh my God. all drink together and it's – you don't talk about it. That's so interesting because yeah. when Justin and I go out, we see a lot of, um like, company dinners. It's mm-hmm. very common for you to get – a meal with your coworkers yes, yes. in America, like yeah, maybe like like every now and then, every couple months. If you're like really good friends, it's like not really work related. Like you're just mm-hmm. friends at that point, but it's like very formal. You can tell that there's like a specific boss. Like maybe he's making like a little speech, but I never kept an eye out for like a lady friend. So yeah, I think that's more so like going common. clubbing when they're in the little rooms. Not even in the rooms. Oh like my God. it could be at a bar. Damn. Apparently. Wow. But yeah, also like back to the the love motels, that mm-hmm. was really interesting to hear about. Yeah. Like you can literally rent a motel room for like a few hours. Like not even for the entire night, just like mm-hmm. forever long just you gotta need do it. what you gotta do and then dip. Yeah. And apparently some of them are really nice. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 There's levels to it. Um my oh. friend my friend told me that she went to a love hotel of a guy and he Ooh. got a really nice room. And then like later that year, she ended up going to the same hotel but with a different guy and he got a cheaper room so and there was a difference and there was a difference and then mm. she was just like damn like if i didn't know about the first nicer room like i wouldn't have known to be like annoyed but damn like, like now that i know on yeah, my love motel night for sure and I, would, I just That's thought that was pretty funny easy yeah. i don't know why but i'm picturing like you know in those movies where it's like the honeymoon suite and there's like there's like rose petals a heart hot tub <laughs> That's what I'm imagining, but obviously that's not the case. I have no idea what they look like. But they probably just look like normal hotel rooms. Yeah, the like the people who work there must have the craziest stories. Yeah, and they're probably really used to it too. Oh, for sure. Yeah, but that's, that's. I so would hate to to, to clean up after those. <laughs> okay, another thing that I noticed was that because of all the CCTVs, mm-hmm. like literally, there's cameras everywhere, 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 and all the signage says like you are being watched. It actually it says smile. You're on CCTV. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes they'll talk to you. Like there's areas where um you can't throw trash. Right. And if you walk past and like stay a little bit longer, whether you are throwing trash or not, there'll be like a little voice in Korean like talking to you. Mm. I'm like, Justin, what is it saying? He's just like, Oh, I don't know. I think it's just telling you to like not like don't throw litter. shit. Yeah. Here. But I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, they're very strict about like their trash and recycling, which I think is great. Yeah. Like and the there's separating. also not a lot of public trash cans. There's not. Yeah. yeah. But it's also at the same time like not dirty yeah it's not yeah which is interesting because like new york has so many trash cans and it's so freaking nasty but anyways um so back to the cctvs it's so interesting because like i think jackie and i were at a pocha Mm -hmm. and it was a late night like it was like 1 a.m people are rowdy people are drinking this group of girls next to us they leave all their shit at their table and leave for like 30 to 40 minutes to go smoke yeah and they left their louis vuittons they left like their every, like their phone is like just everything. on the table. Their phone is still there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wallets are out. Like that was shocking. Yeah. And just talking to some of my friends who have lived there for a while, they're like, "Yeah, like people don't really steal." And because you can't, like, you're gonna get caught. Yeah. So fast. Yeah. Because one of my guy friends, he was saying how one time his wallet got stolen, and they found mm. the girl immediately Damn. via CCTV, wow. and the fine was apparently like ten thousand dollars. Whoa. And he definitely did not even have that much in his wallet. Mm-hmm. So that girl risked 10,000 bucks to steal whatever he had. Right. So it was definitely not worth it. Damn. Yeah. yeah. It's it's pretty intense. I think the first time I really noticed it was when we went to a concert. Right. And the concert. So in the middle, there's the stage. And then on the sides, there's different areas for like picnicking, which is so cute. I wish. That is cute. We had more of that in America, um, but everyone would just have like their ramen and their drinks and their snacks and they're eating. But once you're done with that, you can just like leave your stuff on your little picnic blanket and then go to the center the area to go to the stage and like listen to the music and stuff. Uh, and everyone's shit was just out. Like it's crazy. Like, like whole everything, ass, everything, like iPads, phones, whatever, like whatever they didn't want to bring to the center area, they would just leave on their little square. That's so crazy. And no one would care because like, no one's gonna take it i guess that's crazy because also like at the airport i don't know if this was just my short experience at the airport (laughs) but in america they're always like do not leave your stuff unattended oh yeah i left my shit there by itself because i was so used to doing that and no one said anything Mm -hmm. and then 
two weeks after I went on a trip with my friend Erin mm-hmm. and we were at the airport lounge and it was a nice lounge. And yeah. she was like, okay, do you want to go get food first and I'll watch your stuff? Like we yes. should take turns. Yes. And in my mind, I was like, whoa, I was just going to leave our stuff here, but right. I guess she's right. Okay. Let's talk about the beauty standards in Korea because it is mm. very apparent. Like just as you're walking very. around and I also feel like fashion style and fashion sense tends to be pretty similar mm-hmm. and like even when you're walking around like home day or anything it's like so many different shops selling the, the same, same thing. exact things but at different prices so yeah. you kind of have to like be smart and like look around um so what did you think or like what stood out to you well okay so the first neighborhood i stayed in with my family was mm-hmm. in Gangnam, mm. and i did not know that that's like the plastic surgery yeah. area it's like the capital. and so i would be walking down the street looking for food and that entire strip or the entire street mm-hmm. it would be just plastic surgery centers yeah mm-hmm. and i'd be eating lunch in the area people would be going to lunch like with full-on bandaged faces right like nose bandages very common sunglasses because they probably <laughs> got their eyes done yeah yeah it's so interesting right because i feel like in america there's a bit of a taboo almost Mm -hmm. like you almost don't want people to know but here it's just like so normal it's like a thing like when you turn 16 or 18 i think you get like your double eyelids yeah like you get it as like a high school graduation gift it's like you graduated so like we're gonna gift you surgery because like everyone else is doing it so yeah and i was getting my hair cut in korea and it was also in Gangnam, so Mm -hmm. of course this makes sense but (laughs) there were like three girls getting their hair washed Mm -hmm. because they had just gotten their eyelids done and oh, they can't get it wet. That's kind of smart. I wouldn't have yeah. thought to go get my yeah, hair Yeah, because like, it's hard to do it yourself, I yeah, imagine. Yeah. So yeah, like the hairdresser was like telling me that she's so used to it because right. every single day they just get yeah. a lot of hair wash appointments. That's so interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's an easy way to make money. Like I'll wash your hair for like 20 bucks. I'm sure it's like, yeah, 20 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I feel like in America, like that's not a, really a thing. I feel like it's weird in America if yeah. you're like, hey, I just got plastic surgery like I'm wash coming my in hair. to get my hair done. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, know. okay, girl, I guess. Yeah. yeah, like go off. Um, but also like Botox is very cheap there. It's so cheap. So many of my mom's friends, it's they so will cheap. fly back to Korea to just like get a little touch up, get yeah. some Botox done. So it's just interesting how like stuff like that is so much more accessible there. Whereas in America, like I hear friends saying it's like a thousand bucks or like 800 bucks to get your lips done whoa yeah but in korea more like syringes no not necessarily Hmm. it's like the same amount of material i don't know what they put in um but in korea (laughs) it's like a few hundred (laughs) or less or i feel like less less maybe less yeah Yeah, i don't know because i had a friend who went to korea just to do some like skincare treatments Mm. and they were like oh we can get like throw on some botox for free if you want and she was just like i've never done it before but if it's free so they're just like people and then she got some botox yeah, yeah it's like for service that's it's, how they that's oh how they yeah it. for service yeah. it's so common interesting but i i did some um like skincare treatments while i was there and i don't think i went to a good clinic like i really wouldn't recommend it like it wasn't bad but it did feel very like factory like and i know that's like a common mm-hmm. um critique of like the industry just because it is so like popular now that they Everyone's can turn out these like, done. factories or whatever um so that they can you know get more customers and they also you know market towards foreigners and like yeah they're like we ha- we can translate in any yeah. language but it's like you guys know what the fuck's going on so we can just do whatever we want which mm. is kind of what happened yeah i will say it's funny like most of the girls have nose jobs and mm-hmm. they're all the same nose and one night jackie and i went out <laughs> and She's kind of like, you know, chaotic energy. Yeah. And she just like makes sudden movements, I feel like. She's just flailing her arms she all the time. <laughs> she really does flail. And so <laughs> she flailed at the wrong moment. Yeah. And she hit this girl in the face. Yeah. Turns out she had just like healed from a nose job or something. Was she wearing a bandage or anything? No, she wasn't. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm like, sure it was But still, still girl, like you shouldn't be going out. You really shouldn't be. But yeah. she starts like yelling at Jackie being mm-hmm. like, In Korean, nose. right? Um, she said my nose in English. Oh. And I'm like staring at her. I'm like, oh, I think she just got that done. Really? And her friends are like, oh my gosh. And like being so mad at Jackie. And Jackie's like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and then we just like run away. And then like five minutes later, those girls walk by us mm-hmm. and they all push Jackie. Oh my God. Yeah. I was like watching from afar. I'm like, damn, it's like a movie. <laughs> 
I'm glad I'm not a part of it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's like, maybe you shouldn't have gone out. But also, I feel like that's just how they act. Oh, to like, like it's, it's also maybe common. Like, why would getting my nose done stop me from doing anything? Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Cool. What other beauty standards came to mind when we're talking about this? Well, I think the makeup style in Korea is also just very different. Like, mm-hmm. Jackie was telling me how when she went to an NFT thing, I don't remember what it was, but it was in Korea, obviously. And they were just like, we can tell that you're immediately American because of the way you do your makeup. Yeah. Like the brows defined. There's an arch, you know, there's like winged eyeliner, there's yeah. whatever. Like I actually went to like a Korean beauty workshop or like class thing. And the makeup artist um, was talking to me about how like a lot of things aren't bad or good. It's really just cultural differences and what you personally like. Yeah. So she did my makeup and at the end we didn't do anything to my eyebrows because my eyebrows are microbladed. So they're already kind of filled in. Mm. And then I was like, oh, my eyebrows look really light. And like, should we fill them in or do like a eyebrow gel or whatever? And she was like, oh, you think they look light? And I was like, She's probably like, they're too dark, girl. I was like, um, yes. And then she was just like, oh, okay. And then she just kind of laughed because I think in Korean culture, it's like, like this is really dark for them. I feel like with brows, I feel like a lot of like traditionally Korean girls like to make them like brown or like a different and color. And they're also stick straight. Mm, they're like completely no straight arch. across their face. And I personally don't love the look, mm-hmm. but I do think it looks nice when the rest of your makeup fits that like Korean makeup look. Because if you're doing American makeup everywhere else, but then stick straight brows, yeah. it looks fucking weird. That's true. But, you know, when they do it well and it's all cohesive, I think that looks really nice. But for me personally, I don't really see that working on my face. Um, yeah. yeah, it was it was interesting because I would meet people there and I think they were trying to be offensive by saying you look so American or mm-hmm. like, oh, you dress like a New Yorker. Like these girls would say that's like to derogatory. Me. It's very derogatory. It's not like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, New York. It's yeah. like, oh, you dress like you're definitely not from here. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> to each their own. <laughs> oh, also at this makeup class, um, she was telling me how her. Um, really good friend who's also a makeup artist she got her um, cheeks or like she added filler to her cheeks to reduce her cheekbones and i was like americans Whoa, would never they get filler to raise their yeah, like cheekbones. google fat removal like raise the cheekbones and then she was like yeah no like in korea it's prettier when you have like a small like a face round but a face? round face <gasps> and like not to have too many angles so like to have really like sharp a, like soft features yeah so like having too sharp of cheekbones or chin or whatever is actually like not a good look that's I, crazy I, when she said that i was just like damn like it's really crazy how beauty standards really differ wherever you are in the world yeah and as women it's almost like who's telling us like we need to look a certain way because mm-hmm. in another part of the world it's going to be the opposite. So like we keep getting fed these messages of like, you need to look like this or that or that. And it's just like, why? Like in America, we like gua sha, we contour the shit out of our faces. the bronzer, everything. And also in Korea, they like to look very pale, which is another Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so another thing, girls obviously know I am Korean Mm -hmm. and they'd be like, oh, you're Filipina because you're tan. In and Korea? I'm, yes. I got Filipina like two, three times. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You're like, no, I'm just like But I was literally like, in the sun. Spe- I was speaking in Korean to them and mm-hmm. they still are like, oh, are you like full Korean? And I'm mm-hmm. like, huh? What do you mean? And they're yeah. like, you're just so, they would say dark. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. Colorism is not great. Not great. Yeah. Because on great. sunny days, people will be walking around with big ass umbrellas. Yeah. And it got to the point where I was like, should I be wearing I started umbrellas? doing that after Korea, actually. Yeah, because it's like, yeah. I mean, yes, the sun damage and like, are you wearing sunscreen? And like, whatever. I've gotten so much better about wearing sunscreen after going to Korea. Yeah. Like, I I cannot leave the house if I don't have sunscreen on. Mm-hmm. And before I was kind of like, oh, I forgot. Like, it's whatever. Mm-hmm. But now I'm like, absolutely It like not. feels wrong now. Like, it feels so wrong. Yeah. Like, I need to have sunscreen on my face. Yeah, but actually when I went to Spain, I brought an umbrella just to keep the sun away. Mm-hmm. It worked great yeah because you yeah. also get really hot yeah so it's like, like people nice. were jealous of me but i was also like the only one there using mm-hmm. an umbrella when it was not raining right so it felt a little weird but i was like yeah. you know what i feel good so yeah but in yeah. korea that would be so common so common yeah like you're the weird one for not having an umbrella exactly almost. yeah yeah because when i did the class too this was after our philippines trip mm. so i got a lot tanner after that trip too we're still we have like residual i know shoulder like- tans right now it's like <laughs> 
crispy. Maybe you can't tell right now, but yeah. it does feel crispy. crispy. But at the class, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely look, like tanner than I normally am because I think my foundation was like not the right color like at all. And she was like, oh, yeah, like your forehead's darker because like the sun. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I did not even notice that. But OK. <laughs> mm. And then she was like, oh, like, well, yeah, like this foundation is a little bit too light for you now. Like maybe you should try this. And I was kind of like, OK, mm. sorry. <laughs> yeah. But I think overall – we had really good experiences in Korea. It's just I loved it. So interesting to see like the cultural differences. Yeah, I definitely want to go back once a year going forward, mm-hmm. especially since I have these like new family members. Right. And yeah, I don't know, like it was really nice just reconnecting. Yeah. And just being in Asia in general, I think was great. And yeah, I don't know. Definitely yeah. want to keep doing it. It's a lot of fun. And for me, too, it was really nice to meet Justin's family. Right. And he also wants to go back, like, maybe once a year. Maybe not in the next year just because we were there for so long. Yeah. Maybe in, like, two years. Mm -hmm. I want to go back more often. I might go, like, in March. Who knows? Ooh. Ooh, go during cherry blossom season. That's the plan. Yeah. The cherry blossoms in Korea are really pretty. Like, everyone talks about how they're really nice in Japan. But they're they're also really nice in Korea. They're so nice in Korea. Like, it's honestly pretty underrated because everyone just thinks Japan, you know? So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Well, I think that's it. Awesome. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you for tuning in. I'm sure there's a lot more thoughts on Korea that we did not cover, but we just wanted to record this to remember our experiences in Korea and keep it top of mind. Share with people who are maybe planning a trip soon so you can like hear a little bit about what life is like there as a foreigner or as someone who's not, you know, from Korea. Yeah. So. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Asian Glow Up podcast. You can find us on Instagram at Asian Glow Up pod and at www.asianglowup.com.